how's it going guys today we are working on the humvee we're gonna be installing the advanced cooling kit on the 6.2 liter gm diesel so apparently the rear bank of cylinders back here has a tendency to get kind of hot and there are drain plugs back there that you can remove and are going to vent to the coolant flow up here and supposedly it's going to reduce the engine temperature it's going to increase efficiency and just help out with cooling general all around so we're going to take the dog dog house off and that's going to give us access to the engine in the back here so we'll catch you back in a little bit all right so give you a little backstory about this first thing i did was elevated the rear of the truck so this way my, my logic being more of the coolant is going to run toward the front of the engine and the heads so when i drain it out access to the back i might not have to drain as much coolant might make it a little bit easier so got it up on some blocks there now this is what the kit comes with you've got two lengths of hose one for each side all the fittings you need to hook these up to that uh, coolant line on the top of the engine there you also get these plugs here with the gaskets ready to go and they even give you a little bit of thread tape here too also comes with step-by-step -step instructions with color pictures this is the paradox by design kit so you can find these on ebay this one was 270 dollars and uh had a lot of a lot of good reviews so we'll uh see how it goes just be be warned when you order the paradox kit you have to specify the one for the humvee the 6.2 liter diesel is also in the m1008s m 1006s or whatever they were the uh essentially the diesel blazers that the military was using for a while so when you go to order this thing make sure you specify the right kit just a little uh sit rep got the doghouse off and these are the access plates right here this one right here with these two bolts it's gonna be a bit of a bit of trouble to get to because there's a uh i'm sure if that's a detente cable or if that's the something off the transmission shifter that's got a mount on that side that's got to come off so I can get to that plate. That's the access hole. It's a grounding wire for the engine. That's got to come off, so I have to disconnect the battery. And here's the one on the other side. You can get a better, better view of it. Here's that figure eight shape, whatever you want to call it. And uh, you know that's where those hoses have access. They're pretty high up, so you don't need to drain a lot of the coolant out. But that's that's where they're going to go. Mystery time. You're looking under here, there's no batteries. So where would they be on this beast? Well, I will tell you, they are under the passenger seat. Very easy, two clips here, just flick those off. Flick the seat cover out. And there they are. And these are just two crap batteries that I just pulled out of some other old cars and uh, you know just to get the thing running and the heck is this tropical punch flavored juice packet from an mre nice uh, all right so we're going to detach the battery and get the grounding cable off and remove those plates all right welcome to under the truck what we're going to do is we got to let the petcock out which is that right there and we're going to loosen it up Ooh. Yeah. this here okay back this off here oh okay that's loose and then we can start letting the coolant out what I'm gonna do is I kill two birds with one stone here I'm gonna fill this with coolant for the cheap Liberty so they say not to reuse coolant, but we don't really care about the liberty, so it just is what it is. Okay, drain the coolant out. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to remove this first. I got this grounding cable out of the way here already, so what I'm going to do is back these off a little bit. They're already a little loose. I already loosened them up just a tad. Um, back these off. I'm going to pry that up with a screwdriver real easy, and I'm going to see... Okay, that came off. That's loose. 
All right, I just want to open it up a little bit, see if any coolant leaks out. All right, and I don't see any, so that means I drained enough of the coolant where I can go ahead and take the plugs off and uh, replace them with the with the breathers, so. Okay, here's where we stand. We got the cylinder heads are cleaned off. Got all the gasket material removed. And using a razor blade, just kind of scraping over the surface. And then going over it with a, uh, with a wire wheel. Just, bzz, you know, cleaning up. So, gonna wipe it down with a little bit of uh, isopropyl alcohol. So I'm to clean the surface so you get right down to the engine block. Now, just a little top tip, what I like to do is I like to ball up a paper towel and stick it in there. So as I'm cleaning it, none of the material falls down into your heads. And uh, as, uh, as I'm going along here, you know, remove some of the material. I got a shop vac over here. Remove some material, vacuum it up. Remove material, vacuum it up, just keep hitting it and uh, making sure that no debris falls down in there and then I can go and tug these out and as I pull them out I will have the shop back there as well to catch any of the additional debris that may have fallen in the holes so and then uh, we can mount the all right so we're about to put these in this goes right here now note the red ring faces up and butts up against the plate it's with the uh, breather hole on it now what I like to do is I'm putting a little RTV high temp on there on the bottom side of the gasket it just seems to help out any any place I can I use gasket maker just to alleviate any leaks going on I mean the the kit doesn't specify to do that I'm doing it just because uh, experience has shown that it it really helps so just a little bit you don't need a lot and I only did it around the spot where the uh, the hole is on the cooling head and I didn't there's no point to doing it around the bolts because nothing flows through there so all right we're gonna gonna bolt it on there Here's the finished product you can see it's in there nice and snug it's a little difficult muscling this thing back into place like I said I think that's a detente for the transmission there a uh, little top tip while well, you have these grounding wires off I just hit them with the wire wheel just clean them up a little bit and you can see I clean that up just to make sure that it stays conductive and you know it's out to prevention all right here we are doing the cooling kit next step you got to take this guy off so we're gonna do that because that's where the t-junction goes to feed both of these new hoses the back of the head so doing it a little backwards here I started with the rear of the engine I mean the order of things doesn't really matter it's just the instructions start by removing this part but I started with the back in case there were complications so early in the day you know and there were I wound up having to go to the store to get some RTV so all right that's coming off next and uh, we'll uh, put the hoses on all right so we got the old fitting off and uh, again another top tip keep in mind when you're doing stuff like this it's been on there for a while Mem metal has a memory so when you're going to get something off like this don't just try to loosen it right away I always try to give it another snug because that's the last direction that it was being turned was to be tightened so I tighten it just a little bit until it budges and then back it off. Just makes it a little bit easier, especially the fittings and stuff like that are hollow on the inside. Have a high probability of cracking, breaking, etc. This is the T fitting that's gotta go in here. I'm gonna put that on. We gotta use the thread tape. When you do this, make sure the lap, uh, the overlap of the tape ends in the uh, opposite direction that you're tightening it. Otherwise the tape will bind. It won't get as good a seal. So as you're threading it on there, the tape will want to unravel. So, all right, I'm gonna put it on there. That was a chore. Okay, so, I've got the lines run. Now, all I can say is that it's gonna take some trial and error to get it right. I found the most uh, natural place for the line to lay. With the 90 degree angles, it's, it's comfortable there. The ends are a little wiggly. I can move them around, maneuver them as needed. So you can see this one goes over fuel lines under this wire around here under the bracket and if we come around to the front you can see under the bracket there just above the valve cover goes under the air intake here 
and up over the distributor there and into the fitting. Now we'll cover the other side. So the other side comes out over here. They fork around the uh, the uh, throttle cable, and uh, you can see it goes right over here, over the wire in front, just above the fuel lines for the front cylinders, underneath the wiring harness here, and on the other side, it's pretty technical, getting it in there, I ran it in between these two lines here, which I believe those are oil breathers for the PCV valve, I think that's what that's for, I could be wrong, comment in the video, tell me what that is, but uh, the line sits very naturally right between these two hoses, that's where it's comfortable, it's where it wants to be, there's no stress on this um, elbow here, everything can be snugged up nice and easy, don't tighten anything until you get it fit in there, uh, this may not be the best way for you to run your lines, this is just the best way that I found to run mine where they're most comfortable. These are nice thick lines. The people have commented on the quality of the lines, so I don't think there's any issue there. You know, the thing I had to do was I took this hose fitting and flipped it around. I mean, it's yeah, it's kind of touching the fuel line there, but it's not an issue. I'm not worried about it. So uh, just to give this clearance to squeeze between there, and it fits really nicely. So just when I tighten it down, I'm going to make sure that there is a space here uh, between the intake manifold and the hose. I don't want to rub in diesel everything vibrates so try to give it a little space same on this side I'm gonna leave a little space in there so uh, and naturally it's starting to rain so all right I think that's it and this right here goes to the gauze tank so you put this at a little bit of an angle just like that I'll show you from the top so you can see that's the angle that worked best for mine and there you can see it forks right around the throttle cable it's close but it'll clear None of this is going to move, so not going to be an issue. <sighs> but yeah, it was a little bit of trial and error figuring out the best way to run it. So, and again, it could be different for you guys, but uh, that was the best way I could find to run it. So, all right, we'll get it buttoned up and see you after that. Okay, reconnected the grounding cable. Almost forgot to mention that to you guys. So... Coolant, water, ready to get, get cracking here. Alrighty, gauze tank is full. So we're going to reconnect the negative battery cable. We'll snug that down and then you run the truck for five minutes. Well, the truck is running and it seems the install went pretty well. So no leaks to speak of yet. So I think we should be good. can already tell that the kit is working a treat because it took the truck quite a long time to get up to temperature even with the radiator fan turned off mine's on a kill switch so I can turn it on and off at my leisure and it took the truck a long time to get up to temperature even without the fan running the truck remained at its operating temperature it's 195 degrees Fahrenheit so it seems like the kit is already already helping because before when I had the engine running on this it would it would slow it was a slow climb all the way up until it would get to about 220 at that point I would pull over and let it cool off uh, before uh, before I had the ability to turn the fan on and off at, at my uh, discretion so it was overheating for a while but this already I can tell it's it's cooler so the kit is a great kit I think it's relatively decent uh, as far as the price points concerned the instructions were great colored pictures and everything shows you how to do it if you're not mechanically inclined I think that this was 
something that you might be able to tackle if you're at least handy do it yourself or but uh, you know after a couple of weeks of driving it around come back revisit and uh, go over it again so staying cool on a hot day today so we'll catch you for the next video later on